In Module 3 we cover the second order conditions for the Lagrange multiplier problem. First we look at the second order conditions for a local maximum or minimum. Then we'll see how we can determine whether a stationary point is a global extreme point. Recall the first order conditions. These are necessary conditions, but they're not sufficient. We know we have a stationary point at x0, y0, but no more. The second order conditions are also called sufficient conditions. Given that we have the first order conditions, then the second order conditions are sufficient to tell us whether we have a maximum or a minimum. If we have more than two variables or more than one constraint, the second order conditions for a Lagrange multiplier problem can get quite complicated, and they're usually expressed in terms of matrices. We'll stick to the simpler case where we have two variables and one constraint. In this case, we define a new function, the d of x, y, and lambda. This is how the function is expressed in our textbook. It looks complicated, but don't be daunted. Remember that the f function is the objective function, and the g function is the constraint, or more precisely, the left-hand side of the constraint. So the d function is made up of a combination of first and second order partials. These are the second order partials. And these are the first order partials. If we look at these terms, there's a simpler way of expressing the d function. Think about this term, and we'll go back to the first order partials. Here we have the first root of the Lagrangian with respect to x. Let's differentiate that once more. So the second order partial with respect to x is equal to simply f11 prime prime minus lambda times well, the second root of the constraint g11 prime prime of x and y. So here we have our first term in the d function. We can replace these three terms by the second partials of the Lagrangian. This is a simpler and I think more practical way of formulating D. After all, we find the first order partials of the Lagrangian in the first order conditions, and it makes sense to differentiate those one more time. We take the appropriate derivatives, and then we formulate D. The second order condition entails evaluating D at the stationary point x0, y0. If d evaluated at x0, y0 is negative, then that point, x0, y0, solves for a local maximization problem. And if d, x0, y0 is positive, then x0, y0 is a local minimum. Let's go back to example 1 and see how that works. In example 1, we wanted to maximize a utility function subject to a budget constraint. We found a stationary point x1, x2 equal to 8, 14. What we want to show now is that that's at least a local maximum, since we have a maximization problem. We start by stating the test. We have the function d of x1, x2 and lambda. If we evaluate that at x1 star and x2 star, and the value is less than 0, then x1 star, x2 star is a local maximum. We have a whole bunch of first and second order partials. The first step then is to find those. Recall L1 prime is equal to x2 plus 2 minus 4 lambda. Differentiating once more with respect to x1 will give us, well, there are no x1s in that function, so L11 prime prime will be 0. L2 prime is equal to x1 minus 2 lambda. Differentiating that once more with respect to x2, Again, gives us 0. We can differentiate L1 prime with respect to x2 or L2 prime with respect to x1 to get L1 2 prime prime or L2 1 prime prime. L1 2 prime prime equal to L2 1 prime prime. That's equal to 1. The constraint was for x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 60. The first root of g1 prime will equal 4, g2 prime will equal 2. So now we can substitute into our d function. That will equal well, 0 times 2 squared minus 2 times 
our 1, 2 was 1 times 4 times 2 plus 0 times 4 squared. And that's equal to minus 16. We've evaluated D at the stationary point. Now it's time to write the conclusion. So D is less than 0. Therefore, x1 star, x2 star, equal to 8, 14. Our stationary point is a local maximum. Recall from lecture 7 that if a function is concave, then the stationary point is a global maximum. Similarly, if the function is convex, we have a global minimum at the stationary point. We can apply the same test to a Lagrangian. If we can show the Lagrangian is concave, then our stationary point x0, y0 is a global maximum. If the Lagrangian is convex, then we have a global minimum point. We can see that if we go back to our diagram. The objective function is a concave function. What we're interested in is the Lagrangian. If we can show that's concave, then we know we have a global maximum. In lecture 7, we found these conditions for global maximum and minima. If we have a stationary point and our function is twice differentiable and defined over a convex set, then if the second partials f11 and f22 are both less than 0 and this condition holds, then the function is concave and x0, y0 is a global maximum. Similarly, if f11 and f22 are both greater than 0, then we have a global minimum in S. The important thing to note is that these conditions hold for all X and Y in S, so over the whole domain. As you saw, if condition A holds, the function is concave and we have a global maximum. If the inequalities in B hold throughout the set, the function is convex and we have a global minimum. We can translate those conditions into notation for a Lagrangian. Again, the Lagrangian should be twice differentiable. We have a convex set in S because our function is constrained. In conditions A and B, we've just substituted the second order partials for the more general second order partials of our original test. What we can do now is to test whether the Lagrangian is a convex or a concave function, and so see whether we have a global minimum or a global maximum. We'll go back to example two and do that. Once you've looked at this example, you can go on and look at example 3. That will conclude our lecture on Lagrange multipliers. In example 2, we had a firm producing products x and y that wanted to maximise its total revenue function. This was subject to a budget constraint. We found the stationary point x0, y0. What we want to do now is to show that that stationary point, well, first was a local maximum, and then we'll show it's a global maximum. As we've seen, the second order conditions for a Lagrangian are based on this function d of x, y and lambda. The test for a local maximum is this. We evaluate d at the stationary point x0, y0, and if the value is less than 0, then x0, y0 is a local maximum. In order to evaluate d, we need to find the second order partials. Let's begin by writing down the first order partials. We need to find L11, L22, and the cross partials L1, 2. First we find L11 prime prime. It will differentiate the first partial with respect to x once more with respect to x. The first term is 36. Differentiating with respect to x gives us 0. The second term gives us minus 6. The third term again has no x, so the derivative is 0. For L22 prime prime, we differentiate this function again with respect to y. Again, only the second term is non-zero. It'll be minus eight. For L12 prime prime, well, that's equal to L21 prime prime, we can differentiate the first partial with respect to x, again with respect to y, or we can differentiate the first partial with respect to y, once again with respect to x. In either case, we get the same result, that is zero. Next we want to differentiate the constraint with respect to x to get g1 prime and with respect to y to get g2 prime. 
have the constraint there g1 prime of x y oh, differentiating with respect to x will equal 5 and g2 primes will equal 10 so let's plug those values into our d function that will be equal to l11 and it was minus 6 times g2 prime squared 10 squared minus 2 times l12 or 0 times 5 by 10 plus l22 times g1 prime squared well that will be minus 8 times 5 squared if we carry out that calculation we'll find that's equal to minus 950 so evaluated x naught y naught d is less than 0 therefore we can conclude that x naught y naught equal to 5 5.5 5 is a local maximum it's a local maximum because we evaluated d at x naught y naught so note the process here first we state the conditions of the test namely if d is less than zero then x naught y naught is a local maximum we evaluate d at x naught y naught and if the condition is met then we conclude that that point is a local maximum we've shown that x naught y naught is a local maximum now we want to show that it's a global maximum as well how do we do that if we can show the lagrangian is a concave function then that means x naught y naught is a global maximum remember the test for concavity we came across this first in lecture seven in order to test for concavity we need to show that these conditions hold over the whole domain of the function in this case the lagrangian we need to show that the direct second order partials l11 and l22 are both less than or equal to zero over the whole domain and then we need to show that this function is greater than or equal to zero over the whole domain if that's the case the lagrangian is concave and x naught y naught is a global maximum let's have a look at those values then as we saw l11 prime prime was equal to minus six l22 prime prime is equal to minus eight l12 prime prime is equal to zero so if there are no x's or y's and any of these functions then they hold over the whole domain so these two second order partials are negative over the whole domain let's look at the third condition that's equal to minus six times minus eight minus zero so plus 48 again there's no x or y in there so that condition holds over the whole domain so the conditions for concavity are met and we conclude x naught y naught equal to 5 5.5 is a global maximum